from Wallace Wade Stadium, or should I say, AJ, on the practice field beside Wallace yeah. Wade Stadium, as there were some leaf blowers blowing over there about five minutes ago, so we, we did that for you guys. Grass <laughs> sucker. Grass field, so they got to suck up yeah. all the chewed up. They got turf. a lot of stuff going on over there. We try to get away from it. I'm THI Stafford, mm-hmm. Jacob Turner. Joining me, as he always does, for yet another three things post game video. Our very own publisher, Andrew Jones. And AJ here following Carolina's 38 to 35 win over Duke. Carolina keeping the victory bell for yet another year. Um, Let's start with this. I think we have to start with this, the last drive. So, so big for Carolina. I got a good video of it. I'll, 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 we'll put out a video over the next couple of days with some offensive highlights from the game. You'll be able to see it on there. I was right down there in front of it. I think my favorite part of the play um, is Drake May pointing to Antoine Green right before he throws it as he's running for his life, telling him that he go right to that corner because I'm going to throw it to you. Does that? Antoine Green barely keeps the foot in bounds. I think it was the right call. Yeah, it was. It, it was. it was very close, but it was the right call. The, the, the call standing on the field. And AJ, that was huge. That drive was huge for, for Carolina to be able to get down there. Obviously, we'll talk in a second about what led to Carolina getting the ball back and having an opportunity to even go march yeah. down the field with the chance to win it. But that, that drive, that play in particular, Drake May continues to do it. And, and Antoine Green, too, a guy that's been around the program for a while, making a big play when it matters most. He said he told Drake to go be great. What he did, so yeah. you're great, go be great. And that's, there are a hundred themes. That's the beautiful thing about football. Yeah. You could slice up a bunch of stuff and say, here's a theme, here's a theme, Especially here's a, a game theme. like that, yeah. But if there is a constant theme about North Carolina football this year, it's Drake May. Mm. He's great. Mm. And he's one of the three or four best quarterbacks in the country. We're not going to get into highs. No, nah, I won't talk about that. Because Hedden Hooker and C.J. Stroud, they're, they're light years ahead right now. That's yeah. fine. Drake's got plenty of time. What's important is the fact that he is a great quarterback, and he is showing that he is as good or better than any quarterback they've ever had here. We've now got seven games of intel. He executed a game-winning drive tonight, and he did it a night where he fumbled a couple times. Mm-hmm. They weren't his fumbles. The irony is the one fumble that was totally his fault, they actually fell on. Yeah. The two that weren't really his fault, they're still going to go down as fumbles. That's the way things are. I've, Caleb Hood, not yeah, that one was just loose. that was just, unlucky, and then it was yeah. a great play by Duke the other time, getting the ball loose. So Drake's lost four fumbles this year. That's on his record. Mm. But man, you know, he doesn't let stuff bother him. He fixates on negatives, but he doesn't let it bother him. Yeah. So here's a guy who's so mentally strong that he's going to zero in on this stuff tomorrow, yeah, no doubt, and the next day, and the next day. But he's so mentally strong, he tosses it to the side and he takes care of the next play. Mm. And I thought that you know, Duke only got to him, I think, twice tonight. I haven't looked at the final stats yet. But pressured him a lot. Yeah, they a hit lot him a pressure. lot. Yeah, they was, hit him a he lot. He was forced to run a lot he too. Was, his uniform was dirty. Was yeah, no doubt. They hit him a lot, and he just stays with it. The, mm-hmm. the touchdown that he had in the first half, and I know we're talking yeah. the last drive, but he rolled. He showed incredible patience. He did that again with this one. Yeah. You're talking about pointing. He's so patient. He knows where his teammates are. And Antoine Duke Green did an amazing job staying in bounds. It looked when they ran it back initially at regular speed. It did. He stepped out. And every Duke fan in here thought he thought, it, thought And they, they played too. it in here, and the place is going nuts. And you could see the Carolina players going, oh, yeah. man, they were upset. Mm-hmm. But Antoine said, nah, I knew I was in the whole time. They, it was funny because the Duke, you could tell the Duke fans got really loud and started cheering, and then they showed a different angle they where they zoomed in on it, and then the Carolina fans started agreed. cheering. Yeah, I agreed. It was interesting in that respect, yeah. It's a good thing he was wearing white cleats and maybe not black cleats. Yeah, it was the right call. Black cleats you may too. not have seen it. So. It was very close. But it was so it was very close, but it was a hell of a play by Antoine. You guys had an amazing four games back from the injury. We were joking. He had a 16-yard catch on a third down, mm-hmm. and we joked that, oh, man, he just killed his his reception <laughs> per reception yardage <laughs> average because after that first catch he was averaging 32 and a half yards of reception big, yeah big play on the season but huh. that last one was huge the drive the, the guys knew drake was going to score mm-hmm. and i think drake knew he was going to score he, he has said some things that people that aren't fans of north carolina have got a little annoyed at i'm a winner i'm used to winning i always win but he is Mm -hmm. and you want that kind of confidence from your quarterback you want a quarterback saying okay guys whatever whatever the duke did to give us the ball back they gave carolina a gift in my opinion but but carolina then had to take take responsibility take advantage of the gift Mm -hmm. and they did because they have a great quarterback yeah they have a quarterback who's just adding stuff to his resume every week and in, he did here in this game. It's a memorable ending, and we could look back and say that that drive was the most important drive of the season yeah. because if they end up 
Coastal Division champs. That could have occurred here tonight. They're now 3-0 in the, in the Coastal, or in the ACC. They're 4-0 on the road. They're 6-1 overall. And they're that way because of Drake Maine. Let me also just throw one little tidbit in here as well. Mm -hmm. You still need to get a couple stops. Yeah. And as maligned as this defense is, and they give up crap loads of yards. And sometimes they don't, they have terrible with containment. Sometimes a wheel route, the receiver's open, and there's nobody in your vision mm -hmm. sitting from the press box, right? But let me tell you, they came up with the play it out. They had the lockdown fourth quarter and made plays at Georgia State. Mm -hmm. They came up last week in Miami with the play. And then today, in that third down package that we finally got Will Hardy to talk to. Yeah. We got Noah Taylor the other day. We're asking about third down package. Noah gets a tip. Hardy makes the catch. They get the ball. They make a big play again and get the win. So as maligned as they are, they're stepping up. And I just think that Drake, that offense, gives them so much confidence. They're winning games, man. Yeah. And we're going to talk about this in a few minutes. But yeah. That was no surprise to anybody that covers this team that they were able to score that touchdown. Yeah, you look no, at the no. clock and say, 16 seconds mm -hmm. with this defense. Wow. This is a hell of a win with a great quarterback and a NFL wide receiver, by the way. Max says Antoine is yeah. an NFL wide receiver. I think so too, yeah. Josh Downs making plays, getting down the field. Really good. So a lot to say about it. I mean, like I said, the offense is really impressive. It, it was impressive. Yeah, it was. It definitely was. But, AJ, let's look back a little bit before that. We'll talk about the possession that Duke had right before Carolina got the ball back yeah. because you're talking about, you know, Duke scores a touchdown. It's called back for, I believe, was – I can't remember the call it was after the – I think it was an illegal touchdown. formation. Illegal, illegal formation. Sh illegal, illegal shift. shift. Illegal shift. Called back for an illegal shift. Then Duke, you know, has another play to do it, and they're called for shot blocking, I believe shot is what block, it was, yeah. right? Puts him out of field goal range, essentially. Wasn't even close on the field goal. And that gives Duke the ball back. AJ, I mean, you're talking about, you know, Carolina's a penalty away. And I didn't, I didn't see, I don't, I don't know, I didn't see the specific flag. I'm, I'm assuming it was the right call of, you know, penalty away, away from, you know, essentially losing uh, that one. Hardy was in coverage on that touchdown. Yeah, I know. And, and he, he wasn't too far from and, making a play on and it. And credit it. Brandon P on our staff when they, they put the third down package, the dime package on the mm -hmm. field. It was only a third and like, Five or mm -hmm. six or something like that. And Brandon says, boy, they shouldn't put this package out there. Yeah, and I agree. It they shouldn't put this package it. out here there. And they went and they scored touchdown and, get, and Will Hardy yeah. was in coverage. Of course, Will ended up making the interception. The interception, yeah. Like a half hour later, even though it was like two minutes a game. Yeah, it was time. one of the longest fourth quarters I've ever been a part of. But they, they, Duke was going in to score. They yeah. were going to win the game. They yeah. were going to score a touchdown, game over. No doubt. And, and it was huge and, because and, – and, and they screwed up. Yeah. And Carolina gifted them earlier in the game as well. But, but it's key to take advantage of the gift. When you get yeah. one, Make you got to take advantage of it. And Carolina did that. But, man, Duke really screwed themselves in that situation big time. They definitely did because that touchdown would essentially ice the game. I don't think there was enough time left for Carolina to score yeah. enough points at that they point. Were, I don't even know why Duke threw, to be honest with you. I don't should've know either. The, they were running all over them, yeah. should have rushed run the ball. I was, I was surprised at that, too. I thought that they would run, use a little bit more clock, run, and put Carolina in a terrible position. But they didn't do it. And credit Carolina. They made know? a stop. They made a stop. I mean, they, day, yeah. they get credit for a stop. There. Yeah. And then they missed field goals, so. Mm -hmm. It's not a vintage stop. It's not like you're out there and necessarily making a couple you're, plays. No helmet downs. stickers on that stop. Yeah, no helmet. That's exactly Even though they don't do helmet stickers, yeah. but they did. No helmet stickers on that stop. No, no way. But it's still a stop because they didn't get them in, they didn't get the, in the end zone. Yeah. And, again, you know, Carolina gave them a gift earlier, which we're going to talk about yeah. as well, yeah. with that ridiculous play call by Phil Longo, who's a great offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. but that trick play was stupid. So I guess we're going to do that. Yeah, we'll talk about that too. But, you know, that, the, the trick play that Carolina called, uh, I believe, Drake almost hit Kamar Morales in the in the left corner of the end zone on that play, but it was overthrown. And I know Matt, you mentioned his post game press conference. Matt saying was not was pleased a, with it. Saying it was a stupid call, and then he, he went at Phil a little bit for calling the play. But again, you know that was another opportunity where Carolina could ice the game. You know, at, at that point, they didn't. And then Duke get, comes back out, things unfold like they do, and then you transfer them to that like last that. play before defense. Just like that. Yeah, with the penalties. That if any criticism I think you could give to Carolina tonight, it's being up 31 to 21 and not being able to stomp your, you know, your foot on the neck of Duke, who it, I was out on the field. It felt like the game was over. It felt like the life out of the building kind of got sucked people out after leaving. Carolina. But yeah, people started leaving. Fans started leaving. Um, students started leaving. still third quarter. Yeah. But, in, you know, it, like we've seen so many times, not only this year with, with this football program, 
they weren't able to kind of deal with some of that prosperity and put the game away. That's the next step for this That's program. The That's the next step is being able to do that. Don't, don't put your foot off the throat. Yeah, opponent. but again, I'm going to say it again. Carolina getting the stop when it matters most, not really happening in vintage fashion. Like you said, no helmet stickers. But Carolina makes winning plays, and they end up winning the game. Yeah, I'm going to talk to Carolina Gift here for a second, too. We're kind of bouncing around. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a lot of different things, things yeah. About. Duke, Drake had the fumble. Duke took advantage of it. They scored. They, they took advantage of a mistake. They scored. Yeah. They went up 21-10. You're thinking, well, well, you know. Some people were tweeting stuff like, so much for Carolina's defense stepping up and turning the corner. It's a long game. Yeah. You've got to let the game play out. It is. You know, you've got to have patience. I know it's hard for fans. But Carolina then scored 21 straight points. Mm -hmm. In the third quarter, up to the trick play, Carolina had outgained Duke 169 to 47 in yardage. And it was 8 to 2 in first downs. They were dominating the Oh, absolutely. Down. They were flying around on defense. They were, they were really on well. point, and it was scripted offense, basically, which is why the trick play made no sense. Because mm -hmm. they weren't in a situation where they had to get something going, and maybe a trick play gets no, you going. No, uh, yeah. Just do conventional stuff. Run it conventionally, throw it conventionally, and just run your offense. You get a gift in that situation there by not a gift, but you get three points when their team goes for it on fourth down on their own 34. Yeah. So Duke, Duke recognized, look, it's now or never for us. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get it, and Carolina got the stop. You're like, okay, the last time you, that, the last t situation you want to be ultra tricky and cute is in that situation because it's free points. It's, mm -hmm. it's a free situation. Mm -hmm. Run stuff, get points. Mm -hmm. I don't think a field goal would have been huge there, but maybe it would have. Yeah, yeah, a field goal would have put them up, what, 13? Yeah, 13, yeah, 13, 13, 30, 30, and just a psychological thing. Oh, you're kicking off again. They're kick receiving again. I think that that could have been a factor. But they were awesome in the third quarter. You go back to the end of the second quarter mm. when they responded after Duke went up 21 to, uh, 21 to 10. Mm. Carolina responded. They've been really good in one-minute offense. And yeah. here they were at the end of the first half doing it, and they were at the end of the game doing it. But, you know, without a doubt in that third quarter, they don't win this game. Yeah. But – you know, look, Phil Phil is a really good offensive oh, coordinator. Yeah, yeah, he's he's highly respected in the industry, and he should be. So people shouldn't, you know, butt beat on him. No, that. no, no. But it's amazing to me. This is how the fragile the emotional component of football can be. It's amazing how one play sometimes can just shift things. Because Duke was Changes on life support, and that sort of gave him a little bit of life. It did, yeah. And then there was the sack, which was bigger than the missed trick play, in my opinion. Mm. And then the missed field goal. Next thing you know, Duke gets a couple first downs, and they're in business. Yeah. And it was only a 10-point game, but it felt like a lot more. Mm. But I said to Brandon, and I think I posted on our board, it's only a 10-point game. Yeah. No, it was yeah, – This defense – A lot to play for, yeah. Which is – up like down, this, yeah. yeah. If, they, if, if they're if they're like this in that stretch, mm -hmm. ten points, nothing. Yeah, no doubt Duke about showed. it. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, just a wild game with some of the sequences, and I, I need to go back and watch it. I was looking through a camera lens on the game, so I'm sitting here trying to remember exactly what what happened. But yeah, I'm watch again, sure. yeah, no doubt. Carolina making plays on both sides of the ball. Like I said, no helmet stickers on the defense for from getting that stop, but they get a stop gives the offense the ball and they go down and do what they did. AJ, last thing, what this means is we always kind of wrap this up with bye week coming up for the Tar Heels, then hosting Pittsburgh, and I believe it's at UVA after that. So some winnable games coming up. I think we thought you know, Pittsburgh struggling a little bit more than maybe some people expected this year. So you would think at home that's a very winnable game, and then a Virginia team really struggling as well, especially coming off a of bye week going into Pittsburgh, allowing Carolina to get healthy a little bit playing a little bit more specifically for Pittsburgh. I have a little extra time to do that. So you think Carolina's got to be full of confidence going into it, 6-1, and 3-0 and in the ACC, sitting really pretty in the Coastal Division right now. So, you know, AJ, I think the bye week comes at a really, really good time for this team. I chuckle, and I'm not being disrespectful, but when the defense gets gashed. Yeah. Duke had more yards than Carolina. When today, the defense the gets gashed like this one, it's kind of hard to be sitting free. I think it was 546 but or something as, like as that. I said in our football show podcast earlier in the week, man, when you're winning games and you still have a lot of stuff to fix, mm -hmm. that's that's the God, greatest so thing. Good. That's the yeah. greatest thing there is because they could get so much better. Max said that tonight. Like we, we can get a lot better. Yeah. They're they're Averaging, I'm going to run a piece on all crunch the numbers, but they've got to be averaging giving up around or close to 600 yards a game on the road, and they're 4-0. Yeah, dead last in the and ACC. And the defense, defense has too. made the plays late to win those games, to help win those games, to, to secure, to seal the deal, right? So when you're doing stuff like that, there's a fortitude. And Mac was telling us back in August, 
He liked this team better than last year's team because of the mental makeup. Yeah, attitude. Because mental, yeah. they consistently practice well. They don't have bad practices. Last year's team was kind of kind of like this, and they perform that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you do the UVA game last year, they scored 59 or whatever it was, you go to Georgia Tech the following week, and they were awful. Yeah. This team pulls itself out of stretches of awful during the course of games because they have a stronger mental makeup. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of the intangibles that you need in order to play for a championship. Now what they need to do is fix some stuff. And we saw adjustments pay off in that third quarter. Yeah, no doubt. You know, they changed. Duke had to adjust what it was doing offensively as well. Had to throw a little bit more. Riley Leonard wasn't having as much success running during that third quarter. but. Again, sometimes when this team goes bad defensively, they just go yeah, bad for a true, while. It's yeah. like falling over a can't cliff. Say they can't get out of it, yeah. But they fall over a cliff almost every game, and yet they're still winning games. So it says a lot about this club. They're 6-1 overall. They're 3-0 in the league. They're 4-0 on the road. They haven't won four straight on the road since 2016. Long time ago. And that was a pretty good team that kind of melted down a little bit late. Yeah, here um, special, yeah. yeah well, that, this is where that <laughs> began. This is where yeah. that meltdown began, that yeah. Thursday night loss at Duke. So... These are games that a lot of teams would lose. These are games last year's team would have lost, mm -hmm. but they're not losing them. So I think the program is showing it's growing, it's maturing, it's getting mentally tougher. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people sort of poo-poo sometimes when when we talk about that and we talk about grit and stuff like that. Jeez, but guys, those are skills just like catching the ball and throwing the ball and tackling properly and making your block and mm -hmm. being a pulling guard and, and being precise with yeah. your with your with your blocks and pulling down the line and stuff like that. That's part of it too. Mm -hmm. Those are boxes, too, that have to be checked for a good football team. So they still have a lot of the execution stuff to check, but they've got the grit. They've got the intangibles checked. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is tonight the evidence we need yeah. that this club is unflappable mm -hmm. in the end, and uh, that's a great sign. Yeah. They're going to compete for the, for the division title and have a chance perhaps to play Clemson down the road, and we'll find out everything we need to know about him that night. That's a long way away. Yeah, Pitt's going to be a tough game. But going into an open date at 6-1, 3-0 in the league, 4-0 on the road, they have a lot to fix. It's so much easier to fix those things when you're winning games. Yeah, no doubt about it. Because the trust that they have and the coaches. And even mm -hmm. with this defensive scheme, I know people are harping on it. I mean, Gene was fired 170 times on Twitter. God, he was fired today. Trey was, times. Phil even got fired for the trick play. No, so. Yeah. But it's just how it goes, man. People are, oh, we're the worst 6 1 team in the country. That's what people are saying yeah. on Twitter, right? Yeah. Whatever. 6 and 1 is 6 and 1, man. Yeah, 6 and 1, 6 and 1. If they're really good moving forward, no one's going to give a crap that they, no. that they wobbled defensively a lot through the first game. No, games. man. A win's a win at the end of the day. That's all that matters. Yep. Like you said, undefeated in the conference. Doesn't matter how they do it. It's just the fact of them being undefeated, and that's huge for this program, especially yep. when you look at how up and down, like you said, they were just this season. A go, but Carolina getting the win, 38-35 over Duke in that stadium right behind us. AJ, we're sitting at 1.16 a.m. right now. It so was 11.45 11 when we walked in for wait for Mac for the press yeah, press conference is you're about a guaranteed about an hour and 15 yeah, minutes there or is, so now. There is zero chance that I'm even near my bed <laughs> before 7 a.m. <laughs> Zero chance. I only live about five minutes from here, so I'm looking forward to that drive, AJ. I'm sorry to throw that in there for you. Good but for you. Doesn't happen very often. This is the first game in my life I've ever driven five minutes to cover. So and then I'll get like three hours weird. sleep and have to get up and grind keep it going, all this yeah. stuff out. So. But, guys, keep well, it locked. Yeah, again, keep it locked to illustrate.com for all your coverage from tonight. And, obviously, we'll keep rolling out pieces tomorrow as well with a lot of looking at some numbers and other things from Carolina's win. I've been Jacob Turner. He's been Andrew Jones. We appreciate you watching as Always make sure you like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell as well so you know every single time we upload. See you in the next Thanks. one. Thanks.